welcome back to our Express Euro Fest special, the 14th annual European Festival in Burnaby. This is a really popular community event. There's lineups pretty much all day at the gate, but don't worry, it moves quickly. And all kinds of nationalities are represented, not just European. And we have a great example of that with our next story, featuring the Vancouver Swiss Choir and a Korean yodeler. <laughs> Choir has started in the 60s with immigrants who came from Switzerland and needed to connect again at the time when there was no email and no Facebook and anything. They needed to speak the language and be together with other Swiss. They're unique in that they sing in all four national Swiss languages. Today, the choir has 33 members. It's great, we have a, a couple of Dutch ladies and we have a, an English lady. The rest are all Swiss. But one member stands out. I was um, in Canada for 17 years. Yeah, but I didn't know that there's such kind of nice uh, choir in Vancouver. What did you like about Swiss music? When I was uh, uh, really uh, a boy, I walk the streets and I listen to yodeling. So, oh, what's, what, what's the song? So I just imitate and start. At a young age, Hong traveled to Switzerland and fell in love with the music. He learned how to yodel, and the rest is history. He translated a hundred songs from Swiss German into Korean, and you can find him on YouTube and he sings Swiss songs in Korean, very unusual. Hong also plays a special accordion, one of only two found in the world. It was his friend Bernie who convinced him to join the group. It really shows that uh, Switzerland is multiculturalism and so it's great to have a, a Korean sweet ugly player in our choir. And it's great. He helps me with the Alporn too. He plays Alporn, so he, he, he's a good teacher. This is Hong's second year in the choir, and his new Swiss friends welcomed him with open arms. Nobody who can do what he does, such as playing off the Switzer Ergeli, the small accordion, and also to yodel solo like he does, you know, so he's a great asset to us. It's a good opportunity to uh, join the Swiss Canadian people and they like uh, music and uh, I like the lifestyle. They make beautiful music together, but this choir represents more than just song. It's beautiful for the Swiss people who live in Vancouver and in the lower mainland, the whole BC, they come here and it's nice to be a little patriotic and yeah, have fun, enjoy the, our traditions and it's, it's just beautiful. In Vancouver, I'm Melanie Panetto for The Express. The Vancouver Swiss Choir performs next at Sanger Fest, happening June 27th through July 4th. Entertainment is such a big part of the European Festival, and we're heading back to the dance floor with our next story. It features classical music, elegant costumes, and a way for the Polish community to rediscover their roots. The Poles know how to party, and here at the Polish Community Center in Vancouver, that usually involves a lot of dancing. Polona is just getting together, doing Polish dancing, you know, uh, enriching yourself in Polish culture, having fun. It's a good time. As long as you can keep up. Because with the hops and twirls, the dance steps can be as elaborate as the costumes. Sometimes it's the like both of the footwork and the handwork because sometimes you have to do them both at the same time and it gets really confusing. But there's much more to Polish dance than the polka. Maria Filipowski choreographs Polonaise, an elegant style of dance that dates back to the Renaissance. It's one of the national dances of Poland, and it's also one of the court dances. Uh, it started off in the peasant world, of course, where people used to walk around to songs. And then when the courts adapted it, they made it more elegant with the style and the costumes, because the costumes aren't really folk costumes that you saw. They're more of the nobility, gentry costumes. 
It's a history not lost on this largely first and second generation Polish Canadian crowd who came not only to dance, but to rediscover their roots. My parents came after the war. Um, they brought their traditions and their language and they, it was very important for them to keep this alive because they couldn't go back after the war. And, uh, but now a lot of people have integrated into the Canadian society and we just try to keep some of our culture alive because we all like to know where we came from. And they're doing a good job because this type of dance has spread across Europe and North America. All the more reason they're proud to be Polish. I'm Tim Chung in Vancouver for The Express. To find out more about the group, you can head to their website. You're watching our Express Eurofest special. After the break. And we're proud to be serving the number one beer in Germany, Kronbacher. Kronbacher? Kronbacher. Beer and bratwurst. If you go around, you have all European country practically. Culture and community. The Express. We are your local voice. This is a gorgeous, fantastic event. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and Color Services for Shaw TV provided by The Lounge Hair Studio loungehairstudio.com Ready? This is for all the money. Let's see if you can get this. Oh! Ah! Nice shot. Yeah. I think I gotta work on my game a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you were awesome. Yeah, How you many did. goals do you think you got on it today? Mm, maybe 20. I'm not sure. You never know. I think you're pushing it a little so bit with 20. Festival. Now, us BCers, we're pretty proud of our handcrafted hops, but I guess we're pretty young in the world of beer. We are so. You know, the Bavarians have been doing this for a very long time, and we're proud to be serving the number one beer in Germany, Kronbacher. Kronbacher? Kronbacher. Clubs putting on the beer garden, but it's interesting because what did you tell me? You're half Swiss, half Greek? Yeah. <laughs> Very German. Very German. Well, we're all about European. I don't think we brought the strudel today, but we got some great schnitzel and, and some really good Bavarian smokies over at our food tent. But you're not rocking the ouzo. I put too intense for Euro. No, no, it's a bit too much. We, we, you know, we had to leave some of the stronger stuff back at the club. So, yeah, you know, because yeah, it's a bit of a party already. It's Absolutely. Not even uh, the end of the night. Yeah, and we were supposed to be rained out, and it's just gorgeous today. Awesome. So well, I'll cheers, you. I'm not sure uh, of the many cheersing that I've learned. I don't know what to say. Prost. 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 Chin chin. <laughs> about the drink, the food, or the entertainment. European Festival is also a great place to learn more about the many nationalities represented. So up next, we're joining reporter Kendall Harris for a quick tour under the cultural tent. No visit to Eurofest would be complete without a visit to the cultural tent. Basically, in the cultural tent, it's this space that uh, we give for all our participant countries, which this year we have 30, uh, to display their uh, uh, cultural wares. Some of them have um, uh, tourism-related information and pamphlets about their organizations and their country. Uh, and basically, people come in 
and uh, with the program they can go and visit every country and get a sticker or a stamp from every country so you get like a little passport of Europe right here uh, at the European Festival. You meet quite a lot of different cultures here and you get to know a little bit more about every country and it's just uh, lots of people from uh, different countries. I actually came as a nanny 44 years ago to uh, Vancouver and I grew up in Stockholm. Yeah. We are presenting Russia as a country and we are trying to promote Russian hospitality and the tradition and the local Russian businesses who are come from Russia and but they are Canadian as well. The volunteers at the cultural tent were having fun and so were the visitors. I think it's really nice and, and you get a feeling more for of, of Europe. And here you can see so many countries in one tent and you can get information about the country if you want to travel to that country. You can get wonderful information. I really like the tent. I think it's great to be able to have so many different cultures represented and you can just, it's a one-stop shopping. So I really enjoy it and the kids seem to love it a lot. So I like the rock climbing because when you touch the bell you get, to, you get a free hat. I think you should come here because there's lots of things to do. If you go around, you have all European country practically set in the one tent. This is a gorgeous, fantastic event. In Burnaby, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. The European Festival happens on the last Saturday of May every year. 2011 marks the 14th annual. But this isn't the only cultural game in town. It's time for the Cultus Lake Big Summer Spotlight. Superbog presents the kickoff event to the 2011 Portuguese Heritage Month celebrations in Metro Vancouver. Portuguese Heritage Month is a festival celebration of anything and everything relating to the Portuguese speaking world. Celebrate Italian Day on Commercial Drive, Vancouver's original Little Italy. Everyone is encouraged to experience La Dolce Vita with all that is Italian, including food, music, entertainment, fashion, sports, and dance. Celebrate Russia with three days of celebration at the Russian Community Center on June 9th and 12th and at the Serbian Cultural Center on June 11th. Entertainment will include concerts, a children's program, festival performers, and workshops. Thanks for watching our Express Eurofest special. Adios, arrivederci, avida zain, and bye bye.